there she is, uh, one of the uh, organizers of the Sierra Vista Unite movement. Uh, how did things go today, uh, Asriel? Everything went really good. We we're extremely um, happy and ecstatic about the turnout that we have. As you can see, there are many people out here showing their love and support um, for our movement and for the mu movement of Sierra Vista. We thank everybody so much for coming out. So um, if you didn't make it to the first part of our protest, please come out. Um, you do have some time. There will be some food, but ultimately we are gonna be having a candlelight vigil. Um, so you do have some time to make it still if you are interested in coming. Now, um, what time do you think you'll get the vigil underway from now? Uh, any estimate at this point? Um, yeah, so right now we're still just waiting on a, a few people to come back, um, making sure that everyone is uh, safe. We're getting, making sure everyone's hydrated, giving some people some time to kind of chill out for a minute. Um, it shouldn't be no more than about 30 minutes. Okay. Then so we'll get everything together. Give or take somewhere around there. So still yeah. time for some folks if they're Absolutely. watching this right now to come on down. Absolutely. To the Park, right please in front do. of the stage. Yes, please do. And uh, you guys also started a Facebook movement as well yes. too, right? Yes. And uh, that is, is that SB Unite Movement on yes. Facebook? Yes, it is. And so people can also check you out and follow yes. uh, your stuff there and, and future things that you might be doing. Absolutely, All absolutely. Right. All right, Israel, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. you uh, made the walk to the event uh, you, you were on the four corners there earlier and I see you made it back yes I, even, even with your walker you, you did it I made it <laughs> it just about killed me I haven't walked in a long time yeah but uh, I'm glad I made the walk and uh, it's nice to see the huge turnout that we have I want to tell you thank you for covering everything. Absolutely. Yeah, I uh, was in that walk yesterday. I guess uh, from a wind standpoint, it was a little too windy for from a, uh, to have a microphone and interview people. So that was maybe didn't go quite as well as I wanted, but yeah. but it was helpful for the walkers <laughs> to yeah. have a little breeze. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I imagine that kind of cooled them down a little bit. Yeah. 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 The the wind always makes the audio a little bit tougher. But I guess uh, a good turnout today. Uh, they they got to feel good about you know things in regards to uh, the support from the community. Yeah. Uh, in general. Yeah, and there was a lot of that. I heard there was one person trying to give a little bit of uh, instigation to the cro to the protesters, but other than that, everything seems to have been on gone perfectly. All right. So I guess we're going to get underway here in roughly 20 to 25 minutes and just giving some a uh, few more folks a chance to come on down and and uh, yeah come on out Sierra Vista if you haven't turned out for the march we're still glad to have you here in the park how's that yep come on down all right it'd be great to see you know the more the better yeah
doing? Hey, good. Yeah. How are you guys? Makes Great. a good Thank sun you. umbrella here. Yeah, that's <laughs> mul absolutely mul multi use. <laughs> Yeah, I knew the Sierra Vista, yes. Okay. Uh, were you, uh, your thoughts on the last couple of days? I don't know if you were a part of things last night as well. No, um, I, uh, I wanted to uh, do a protest, uh, and today was my only day to do it, so uh, I took the opportunity to come out here and uh, get my support. Uh, how do you feel things uh, uh, went overall uh, today? I mean, overall, I mean, I liked it was uh, a lot of people, uh, different races uh, for one cause and uh, I mean that's that's the main goal is everyone versus racism so uh, I mean I was pretty satisfied with the turnout I mean like I said I just wanted to do my part and help support the cause uh, as you reflect on uh, what's going on in the country right now I'm sure you've had a lot of thoughts over the last couple of weeks yeah um, would you care to share where you're at on things right now you think we are making or are going to be able to make uh, progress or how do you look at things? I mean, the, I, I hope so. I mean, but it's it's like, I mean, once, it, it has to be a collective um, uh, goal. I mean, it's, you can't ignore it anymore. I mean, if you, if you, if you ignore it, I mean, that's pretty much uh, the problem is, um, I mean, you got people that are, you know, blatant, that, you know, that are, that accept racism or, or are racist, and then you have people that know it's out there, but just fail to um, acknowledge the situation. And um, once we get people to realize that it's like, it's been 400 years, you know, and, you know, um, I'm seeing stuff my granddaddy told, told me about when I was a kid, and I mean, it's like, We've had progress, but it's it's not enough. It's not enough. I mean, it's it's a quality. I mean, you look at you listen. Uh, if you do the Pledge of Allegiance, the end it says justice for all, and that's what everybody should be uh, striving to have. It's, it's justice for everybody, every race, every uh, 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 gender, man or woman, or whatever you, you choose to be, uh, black or white. Hispanic, it doesn't matter. It's, it's justice for all, and that's what should be the end goal. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. All right, no problem. You betcha. All right, folks, the vigil is supposed to start in about 15 to 20 minutes from now. So if you want to come on down, there's still time for you to do that.
Hello, Sierra. Are you uh, ready to uh, get rolling here? Yes, soon? we are. We are ready to proceed right now. Oh, right now? Literally yeah, right now. Right now. So give us about a good, looking at her face, give us about a good two <laughs> minutes and then we are ready to roll. <laughs> Or maybe she was thinking a little longer, but that's hey, fine. Hey, no, I mean, just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, it's her world. I'm just in it. I'm just what wondering. You came here to say your piece and God bless you. How you doing? Well, uh, what brought you here today? I'm Native American Indian, and there's a lot of people missing in the world that are Native, Native American Indian people. So I'm here for the people, but I'm also here for the black people too. And it's, it's such a sad um, ordeal right now. I mean, the last word he said was, I want my mama, you know, something like that. It's like, I'm a mom. I mean, that hurt. And you couldn't do nothing about it. And that's why I'm here. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, folks. The uh, vigil set to start in a few minutes here at Veterans Park, Sierra Vista, right by the stage. And we have protection here as well. Clark Gray from the City Council is here as well. Showing uh, her support. As well as Council Member Glenn, uh, Gwen Calhoun uh, here as well. Chief is here. The chief of police, Adam Thrasher. I believe that's his last name. Over there. And then ran down here and prayed with uh, Elizabeth Woodard. And then went running up the street, met them.
Sexton has made it back again to show his support as well. Hey, George. He didn't notice me. Oh, well. Can't always be noticed when you have a camera and microphone in your hand, folks. That's right. Uh, what, what's his name again? Jesse. Oh, Jesse. Jesse uh, uh, hung out with you all day today, huh? Yeah, he did. He, uh, he's he been out of his tank since about 1 o'clock this afternoon. His bedtime is at 7, so... Guys, thank you so much. Getting close to bedtime. Yep. Long day for Jesse. Yeah, long day he's for sleep Jesse. Well tonight. Yes, he will. Do he's they gonna, sleep, by the way? Oh, they sleep. They have dreams and nightmares just like we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he has his favorite little hammock, and he crawls into it every night. Did you say a hammock? A hammock. So you actually made a hammock for Jesse? A friend of mine made a hammock and sent it to him as a gift. Yep, they all I'd have like their hammocks. that one. Yep. He sleeps in his hammock every night, <laughs> and he sleeps halfway standing up, because a lot of times they'll position themselves Instead of laying down, they'll position themselves like this, and he is no exception. He just, he loves his hammock. All right. Yep. Did he get enough water today? Yes, he did. I gave him enough water, and he drank until he was full. Yeah. Yep. of human beings, you know, everybody, everybody. My grandson is half black, half white. And he's gonna grow up in this, you know, world. It's, it's you know, terrifies me. Look at this guy, oh my God. Well, you've lived in uh, Sierra Vista, how long? 20 years. 20 years, okay. Yep. And uh, how do you, as you see the last few days, um, 
do you, what's your feelings about Sierra Vista after seeing what you've seen? Uh, it's stronger than ever. It really is. You know, we're, we're united and we're not burning houses down. We're trying to help each other. This is one thing I love about this town is we help each other out. And I worry about my, my children, my grandson. I worry about myself, you know. And, and um, you know, it's not just black lives, it's all lives. It's everybody, it's everybody. You know, and the sad thing is it could happen to anyone. And um, that's why I'm here. It's, it's for the rights of, 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 of ourselves and my children. Well, the vigil's going to start here in just a few moments. And I brought candles. They're the little teacup candles. The wind, uh, yeah, but hopefully it stays down, the wind. It was kind of oh, windy earlier, but actually about. it does feel like it's kind of a little less now. So maybe they'll be able to keep the candles going. Mic check, mic check. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah! yeah. All right. Um, at this time, we would like to take a moment and um, open the floor to anybody who would like to say something about uh, coming out today or, you know, what's the reason you, you came out to support um, or, you know, just to get up here and say something. Um, the floor is more than, we're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. We will be starting. We are waiting for uh, some food, so there are going to be pizzas that are coming and we will begin shortly very very shortly okay so thank you guys so much Christian, I am someone who made a decision to follow Jesus. And Jesus is someone who came at the beginning of his ministry and said, I have come to bring good news to the poor, to heal up the brokenhearted, to restore sight to the blind. It is not good news to hear that your neighbor is suffering and to be silent. You have to stand up and do something and say something. And that's why I'm here. I want to thank Sierra and Azriel for inviting me to, to, to pray and to be here with you. It is an honor. I want to just take a moment and acknowledge that the land that we are sitting on, the land that we are standing on, is the ancestral, spiritual, traditional, and unceded land of the Chiricahua Apache people. <laughs> Our sister Rosanna Brown Warrior is here in solidarity. Black and brown people of this country have been hurting for too long and we cannot stay silent. We were honored to watch a best practice city 
in a meeting that the NAACP had with the, with the mayor of this city, with the sheriff of Cochise County, with the police chief who is here today. I want to say thank you, not just for protecting us, not just for coming here today, but for standing with us. Thank you. However you are willing and able, I invite you now to bow, bow your head and heart in prayer with me. Loving God, you created us all in your image. You created us from your love so that we might love one another. I thank you for protecting the people that are here today with us. I ask for your protection for all of those throughout the country and throughout the world who are standing up for justice. We ask that you would continue to guide us and to guide those in power who have the power to make decisions, to change laws that actually work for justice for all. Guide us this evening as we come together to mourn, to listen, and to heal one another. Let the healing begin and guide us, O oh God. In your name we pray. Amen. checked out but she begged she said I can't breathe I can't breathe please keep me here I can't breathe they called the police on her the police carried her out in handcuffs she died her family sued and won the case for $45,000 that's a drop in the bucket that is not worth a life if you're being oppressed no matter what it is. You know, I started thinking last night to myself, what is it? What is it, Bobby, about this, you know? 
It's like, well, I can get up every day and I can choose to do what I want to do. I can choose to do what somebody else wants me to do. Or I can choose what God wants me to do. And I'm here to tell you that if you choose what God wants you to do, everything's going to be a whole lot better in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any anyone else that would like to say anything? Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Um, my name is Alyssa. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I just wanted to shout out to my friends and family in Baltimore real quick because somebody's going to be watching. Um, I'm here in Sierra Vista now. I'm a resident here. I was actually born here. Uh, I'm here today because uh, I love people of color and I'm tired of seeing people thinking less of them than I know that they are. Um, growing up, I didn't know my father and I didn't uh, have a good relationship with my mother and it was people of color that made sure that I had clothes on my back, feed, food in my stomach, um, place to stay and they always show love to me and I will always show love and I will show up um, and I hope that it's hard for sometimes you can't you don't know if you can uh, get people to be on your side or get people to believe the way you are but it's here being enough you can convince someone to change their mind and their heart and open up and I just love y'all and peace and love and I hope to see y'all around town because I'm here to stay. So for everyone and for the people who are streaming online, um, our goal here, if, if every, everybody can agree, we don't have the same kind of problems in bigger cities that we have here in Sierra Vista. And Sierra Vista is truly, or can be, a magical place because of its, its, it's so sheltered. We don't have those problems here but that does not mean that we do not have racism here. For anyone who does not believe that, you're lying to yourself because we have it here. And the stand that we are taking is not against a people, but a mindset that needs to change. It's a spirit, it's an energy, and it needs to die.
always done. We are tired. We are tired of being silent. We are tired of people being silent. If you stand for us, for our people, that doesn't mean white, black, Mexican, green, purple. It doesn't matter if you got blood running through your veins. Oh. If you can do this, if you can shout, you oh. are human. Yeah. You are human. And this, is, this is the time where we come together. People are like, why are you guys doing this? Why are you guys doing this? Well, guess what? Why are we doing this? We're all human. <laughs> we all Black belong together. We are a people. It's time to come together. If you're, if you're a person who, who has to deal with the ignorance of people's opinions and, and mindset, you know what? Sometimes just let them have it. And sometimes the energy is not worth putting out to give to these people. You feed into negativity, into hate. We need to strengthen what we already have. You want to make a change? Hug your brother. Hug your sister. Somebody starts a business. Go support them. Go support them. Start, start investing into your brothers, into your sisters, and into your community. You want to see a change? You have to be the change. That's Don't right. sit here and say, well, so and so's doing it. Sierra's doing it. S somebody else is doing it. You have an individual responsibility to answer your call and your destiny. Period. <laughs> it is everybody's obligation under the stars and the moon to speak on what is right for everybody. For everybody, don't matter what you practice, it don't matter who you like, it don't matter what you claim to be, we all, we all bring. And we all are somebody's child. That's right. We are all somebody's yes. child. Yes. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of the hate. I'm sick of it. Between our own people, we need to change the narrative, change what has been programmed into our minds of the people who are next to us. If you're listening to this online and you're asking why we did this, why we did this, is because we have children here too. Right. We want to see a better place. Yeah. It starts with us. And I encourage everyone, if you do deal with it, you know what? A lot of the people who are angry, they're, they're ignorant, which means that they do not know. They do not know. This is not an experience. They don't get it. But you know, it's not our job to explain to them what we go through either. So everybody, <laughs> keep the love. You know, obviously, we're human, we get angry, you know, but we are stronger than that. And the more we unite, we'll be stronger as a people. Yeah. Thank you. say this. I've changed. Okay. I haven't seen those guys <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> I, I, I'm proud of that. And I say that to say to say if I can change 
And I was out there. I was out there, okay? I wasn't a good boy. But if I can change, anybody can change. It takes, it takes just a little bit of time. And, and it takes you focusing on yourself first. That's right. That's right. And, and, and probably some of, some, some of you guys out there that know me, I, I, I've always said you can only control you. That's right. Anything that you do, anything that you say that comes out of your mouth, you're in control of that. So anything that anyone else out there says to you disrespectfully or come at you in, in some sort of way, it's up to you to control you. You can't control them. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being said, hey, let me, I, I have to say this. I got white kids, okay? I got white and black kids. They need to be here. They need to survive. They need to keep living it. We just have to get along at the end of the day. You ain't got to like me. I don't want you to like me. <laughs> you understand? I just, want, I just want to get along with you. I want everyone to get along because my kids have to live here. Your kids have to live here after we are gone. That's right. Amen. Hey, you can only control me. Yeah. Amen. Uh, hello, my name is Maggie. I'm a, I've lived here all my life. And the reason I'm here today is because I have family. Tanisha, Miss Megan, Miss Cece here. That they've always been by my side. And I, myself, as a Mexican, I've been just like profiled by police. I've been pulled over walking when I was like 15 years old, not doing anything, walking home, pulled over by the cop because, and then I was extremely questioned, which was not, I shouldn't have been questioned, right? But anyways, the reason I'm here is because I love everybody who has a decent heart and is able to understand that the world we live in is pretty ignorant right now. But like these people said, we, the only ones who can change is us. So this is the last generation that's gonna be able to take this. We're done with it. This is all of our, like, black lives matter. We cannot deal with this anymore. No more killings for no reasons. These are little kids and they're afraid too. They shouldn't be afraid of the world that they live in. That's right, that's so, right. That's this right. is why I came here, so we can make a change, yeah. even in Sierra Vista. Yeah. I love you guys, all of you. Um, so real quick, um, if you have children, you want to have them line up over here. We are going to be feeding the children first. Um, just to make sure our little babies are fed and their bellies are full. And then we'll go ahead and let everyone else eat after the children have already ate, okay? Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> My name is Bianca. I'm 23 years old. I was born and raised in Sierra Vista. A lot of my family was born and raised here, too. Um, and I'm sorry if I messed up a little bit. I've never spoken in front of this many people before. Um, I just wanted to come up here and say that um, all lives do matter. Some people think that it's all lives against black lives, but it's not. Black lives are a part of all lives. Mm -hmm. Blue lives are a part of all lives. We have to come together and unite, and if all life matters, black lives matter. So, sorry. Um, I have a lot of friends that are colored, I have a lot of friends that are white, I have friends that have been killed by the cops, but yesterday the cops were walking with us and that changed my mind and my opinion about cops a lot. Um, I participated in the march yesterday um, and it was a little over four miles and I was, as soon as we got to the park, I was struggling a little bit. But what kept me going is that Ahmaud Arbery, he w ran just over a little bit of two miles, and I am blessed to walk over four. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I'm sure George Floyd, he would have loved to walk more than seven minutes that he couldn't breathe. He would have loved to walk that whole walk. He would have loved to be here today. He would have loved to see everything that uh, service is coming together to do. He would have loved to see how the world is today. Um, in the early 2000s, my aunt was murdered. It wasn't by a cop, but she deserved to be here. Um, her son is actually here. Um, he lost her at a very young age. And I don't know if my family knows this, but I have always looked back to a poem that she wrote. Um, so I'm gonna read it. The poem is called True Colors, and it's by Missy Griffey. What do you see? What do you see? Do you see a half-breed, or do you see me? What do you think when you look at my light skin? Is she black, white, or part Mexican? Does she pretend to be black, ignoring the white, or is she misunderstood with no hope in sight? Should she straighten her hair to fit in, or leave it curly to feel like a true African? What do you see when you look at me? A high yellow woman or a wannabe? I see the grins, the laughter, the stares. I notice the looks of disapproval. The whispers and the glares. When will we ever learn to look past one's color? When will we grow to love one another? What is it about me that frightens you so? Is it my dark brown eyes or my bright glow? Is, or is it that one day everyone will realize that no one is pure? For that time is definitely upon us for sure. So what do you see when you look at me? Do you see a half-breed, or do you see me? Yeah. So I have to say, guys, I love you. Thanks for coming out. Well, my name's Alan, and I happen to be a local pastor. And as a man who's devoted his life to God, when I look at the people I come in contact with, regardless of their culture, their race, their creed, I see people who have the Imago Dei, the image of God planted in them. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of watching some young people that I know personally start the march up at the mall. I stopped in, I came down to City Hall and I prayed and then I walked as fast as I could back to meet the march and to finish the march with those who were marching. It is one of the most proud moments of my life to look out and see faces of all different colors marching together knowing that I saw Chief Thrasher and his officers start that march and finish that march with their people meant the world to me. Ladies and gentlemen, our Sierra Vista PD care deeply about us. They care about you. And it was a pleasure to stand there and to cry out that black lives matter. Yes, they do. Sorry. I stand here today because I have two friends in Southern California who are Caucasian. And they saw a little black girl who needed a home, who needed to be foster cared and then later on adopted. And they adopted her. Last night I spoke with my friend and I told her that I marched for their little daughter because I wanted their daughter to live in a world where she could be treated the same way as her sister, whose skin color is white. There is no difference between those two little girls. I consider them both my little nieces. They are my best friends, and their daughters know me as Uncle Alan. I love both of them equally well, and I want both of them to have the same opportunities as each other. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I grew up near Richmond. I grew up in areas where we lost classmates to violence. After I graduated, we had a young man gunned down in the inner city. As part of the violence, my heart broke. And people said, well, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But it shouldn't be that. Every single person that we have lost is a life that should be here with us. Amen. I would love to see an end to the violence. I'm here today standing because I want to seek justice. I want to love mercy. And I want to be more like my God, my Jesus, who loved everybody, who stood for everybody, who had open arms for every single person. I'm here because I believe that every single life matters. And as we've heard when we were marching yesterday and today, 
We cannot truly say that all lives matter until black lives matter. And I stand here today and I stand with them. I had to confess to some amazing teenagers yesterday that 10 years ago, I was one of the ones who stood there when I watched people marching around with Black Lives Matter sign, I said, yes, but all lives matter. But as I grew up and I got older, I began to realize we can't say that all lives matter until every single life matters, regardless of the color of their skin, their creed, their culture. So today I am here as a pastor, as a Christ follower saying, I stand with my brothers and sisters of any colored skin, and I believe that you deserve the same rights the same opportunities and the same treatment that I have, I am here to listen, I'm here to stand with you, and I'm here to say I love every single one of you and value every one of you today and forevermore. How y'all doing? My name is Johnny Cruz. Um, this is my cousin right here, so. No, she pointed me out. <laughs> but uh, my aunt, Ruth, was one of the people who walked with Martin Luther King back when he had his walk. I was always taught from the beginning that if something's not right, if there's injustice, you shouldn't be questioned why you have to do it. Coming from a Pacific Islander family and a black American family, <laughs> I was always taught and this should be how every family should be, to show everyone love. That's right. Yes. Because it doesn't matter skin color, it doesn't matter your nationality, it doesn't matter your religion. We may not agree on things, but at the same time, we're all one person's children, and that's God. Yes. I just want to say I've had to check a lot of my family because I was always asked, and I know everyone's kind of tired of hearing that question, of why are you doing it? and we shouldn't be questioned about why we're doing it. That's right. Just seeing my friends who are not even the same color as me, crying, pleading on social media, who telling their story about how they're getting in arguments with their own parents about why black lives do matter. And like we've been saying since yesterday, this generation, our kids, we should end it. Yeah. And I just wanna thank everyone, this was a very, Amazing experience for me. I'm trying my hardest not to get emotional. Good, because it's good. <laughs> but emotions are okay. This right here, it doesn't matter how small our town is. Fifty states. That's right. Eighteen plus countries who aren't even some of them aren't even black are fighting for this cause. And let me just say something. This is beginning for everyone to speak up for what's injustice in America and what's around the world. And I thank you guys for all coming. Thank you. Yeah.
helpfulness, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. what you mean. You Just know more, what you mean. more of that, because I want to be friends with a lot of people here. I want to be happy while I'm here, and I just want to make it, so... charger. Do you know what to do if you see the police? Please, if you're around your friends and they don't know what to do, teach them what to do so that you can come home the next day. Please call me at 10 o'clock at night. Please let me know where you are at 10 o'clock at night, that you're somewhere safe. I know there's no curfew. I know you're 18 years old. I know the world is your oyster, but if you don't call me at 10 o'clock at night, I can't sleep. When you don't call me at 10 o'clock in the morning, I worry. And when the phone doesn't pick, and, and he's just an 18 year old boy. He's out being an 18 year old young man, sleeping off whatever party, you know, but it's, it's different for him. And it's different for me. Even in the small community that we have, the close knit, tight community that we have, and we all share love for one another, we always haven't had each other's back, be, be honest. We, we have parades, we have celebrations of black love, we have Juneteenth, we have all these things going on in our community and seven people show up at the NAACP. And this could not be one of those things that I just missed. This couldn't be, I have to be home cooking dinner or I have to go clock in somewhere. There was nothing more important today than this, because I have to show my son, who's from a sheltered community, who's from a close-knit community, that he may go somewhere else, and it may be different, and it might be scary, and he needs to know how to protect himself and to protect the people around him. So I thank everybody for coming together here and doing this today, but please continue to educate the people that you love who live other places. Please continue to pray for the people that you love in other places. Pray for the people that you don't know. And how many fathers are gonna miss Father's Day this year that didn't have to? How many graduates aren't gonna walk the stage this year? I wanna see my son graduate, cap and gown next year, and a mishap at a grocery store or, or a convenience store or a party could end that for him. So I just, it's important. What we're doing here today is important, but continue it. Don't do it for the gram. Don't do it for Facebook Live. Do it because you know in your heart that a change needs to be made, and the only way that you can make that change is to be a part of that change. I heard somebody say this week, there's never a bad time for a good change. So thank you guys for being a part of that change. <laughs> Uh, real quick, we're going to pass around hand sanitizer so everybody can clean their hands and then eat pizza. Does anybody so want pizza? Who wants pizza? Yeah, yeah, all right, that's all I got to say. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> There's lots of boxes. Are you sure it's only two hands? I'm not. I'll raise my hand. There's like 30 pieces over there. If you see us coming around, just let us know. Be like, hey, I want one. Can everybody hear me back there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, good one. Um, so they asked me to uh, speak. Uh, Sierra and everybody else that's organizing it, um, and I didn't want to, but I feel obligated to because I, that's the reason I'm out here today, is because I'm able to come out here and support all of you guys who have the First Amendment right to 
speak your mind, right? So I don't want to let anybody get in the way of that, right? So pretty much kind of like the uh, the point that I've kind of been making to a lot of people that I know, I guess, is the, the state that we live in today, not just Arizona, but America, the whole world, right? Uh, the state that we live in, you can be killed for a victimless crime if you resist, right? George Floyd was killed over a counterfeit bill, allegedly, right? Uh, there's something wrong with that. Like, what, would you rather have the problem of that living in a world where you can just be killed at no question if you resist, show the slightest sign or bit of violence or questionable activity, uh, or would you rather live where we can fix that? I had the idea maybe uh, police officers would go on strike if there was a real problem, if they cared, right? They're in unions. They could go on strike and get paid. Uh, people said, well, what would you do without the police here, right? Well, somebody else mentioned you could get to know your neighbors and your family and be less reliant as a society. We need to be less reliant on government and large institutions like that. Just know your neighbors and be good people and just hang out with them. And then uh, I think we'd have less problems that we're seeing today. But uh, yeah, I'm just out here, just a regular dude, so thanks. A regular awesome dude. <laughs> Chucky, I'm from Baltimore. Hey, Chucky. I'm only out here for real because I've been through it myself. I mean, I was 11 years old. First time the police beat me up for standing on the corner, like watching my man die on video from the police. That hurt. So, like, if we can't come together as blacks, how can we expect other races to come with us? So, I'm out here basically to support my people. And hopefully the people that look up to me can do the same thing.
that they're this way. But she lied to put me in a different school system because we were low income. And that's something other women get six years for. Six years. My mom did just signed off a piece of paper and she wants to tell me the system isn't broken. And that's why I'm here. Because she needs to be talking. And Woo! all of us need to be talking. something very simple, and that is to vote. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you knew that during the march yesterday there was a candidate uh, running for local office here who walked with us. There was a staff member from our local U.S. representative that marched with us also. So it's important to find out who these people are that really support this cause. That's right. Yeah. And I want you to, to, if you're not registered to vote, register to vote and make sure you vote and encourage everybody that you know to do the same thing. It's so important. Thank you. Thank you. 
just have a, a very short, powerful poem that came to me this week. I felt it was very timely. I'm here because George Floyd should be alive, along with many, many others, and because my heart follows Christ, and Christ's greatest commandment is that we love one another. Yes. And I thank you all for being here. This is, this is a beautiful thing to see. And I just wanted to share this. The day will come when after harnessing space, the winds, the tides, and gravitation, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, for the second time in the history of the world, we shall have discovered fire. Hi, uh, I'm Amy. I'm 23, and crowds make me really nervous, so I'm very sorry. You're all right, Amy, you're all right. Um, I'm here because hundreds of thousands of people gave their lives so that way I could grow up in an interracial education system. I'm here because my mom taught me to stand up for what's right. I'm here because I've watched too many freaking people be hurt and treated with disrespect because of the fact that their skin is a different color than mine. And that's not okay. Um, crowds make me nervous, so I'm gonna cut this short. You're but right, I'm girl. here because black lives matter regardless of the color of my skin. That's right. Woo! Veterans out there today? Oh, yes. um, we have a veteran. Cut me out. All right, that's what I'm looking for. There he is. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm an ex veteran. I've retired military 22 years. Um, Thank you. Thank you. This life that we live is precious. The Bible tells us that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Right. You're here getting some knowledge today. To make a difference, it does start with you. It starts with each individual. Conversations need to take place. Conversations for real conversations need to take place. First, they need to take place in your heart. Where do you stand on issues of race? Only you know that. Only the, deep down in the dark crevices of your heart do you know how you treat another race. That's where it starts. But then it doesn't stop there. Then it has to be talked about at the dinner table. At home, in the house. It has to be talked about. It has to be dealt with. It's an uncomfortable topic because some evil things come out of our mouth sometimes, doesn't That's right. it? Yep. And so we gotta humble ourselves and we gotta talk about it around the dinner table. Then it doesn't stop there. Then when you're hanging out with your friends and the comment, you people, comes up. Yep. That's where you have to talk about it too. Yep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop there. When you go to the family reunion and you link up with all of those other folks and you hear all those little off-color jokes and so forth and so on. The conversation has to go on there. It has to go on at the water cooler. Where you know when you fill up and get some water? It has to go on there. It has to go on with your sports buddies. It has to go on in the mall. It has to go on at the, at the shopping center. It has to go on everywhere. But it starts with you. It starts with me. And there's some things in us that are evil. Every last one of us have fallen short. Every last one of us have fallen short. So you're here today getting some knowledge, getting a little bit of wisdom. But what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this? It's great to come together and be in solidarity with like-minded think, uh, like thinking people, because we're all like-minded right here. 
But when you leave here today and somebody of a different color cuts you off on the, on the uh, road, what are you going to say? What are you going to think? When somebody steps on your corn or your bunion, whichever that you have, what are you going to say? What are you going to think? That's why it doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop here. Who of you are under the age of 25? Raise your hand. You're critical. You're critical in this movement. But it doesn't stop here. The conversations have to happen. It has to happen here. It has to happen between the ears. It has to happen in your family, around the dinner table. It has to happen everywhere. And it's never at rest because it's never going to be over. It's never going to be over. We live in a fallen world. There's evil amongst us. Okay? Not everybody was brought up to love their neighbor as themselves. Okay? Because some of them were, were told, even in the church, love the, your neighbor as yourselves, but not them. Okay? So, so there's no perfect person. So for all of us who, who I'm, I'm, I'm biracial, half black and half white, all of us who said, you know, we've done that, we've been there, we still have issues. We still have issues. And the only way to deal with it that I have found in my 55 years is through having a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, Jesus is the one that loves you even more than you love yourself. <laughs> and he is the one that can reach deep down in that heart, in the deep, dark crevices of your heart, and reveal some things to you. Because he wants to make you a better person. Make you a light that walks around, that people see and say, my goodness, what do they have? When things come their way, they don't lose their mind. Why? Because they put their trust in God. When challenges like this come up, they get frustrated. They get what's called righteous anger. Because the Bible tells us that we can be angry, but it tells us not to sin. Yes. So yes, you can get angry. But that doesn't mean you have to yell out all of those other things. That doesn't mean you have to pick up a rock and, and move out. That doesn't mean you have to do things that, that can bring condemnation down on you and perpetuate the situation even make it worse. Christ is the answer. He is the answer. No legislation can change a heart. There's not a politician right now that can change your heart. But Jesus Christ can change your heart. Amen. And I know that because there are people out here right now who've had a hard heart. And there are people out here who have lived a hard life. And they turned their life over to Christ. And they are a new person. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. So if you are serious about making a difference and taking a stand, take a stand for Jesus Christ. Who told us to love our neighbors as ourselves, who told us to pray for those who despitefully use us and who persecute us. 